So in the last matchup we're going to highlight for this English Premier League wrap-up are the defending champions Chelsea. They were in action versus Crystal Palace. We all know the whole saga that was played out at the end of last year with Jose Mourinho being sacked late November, who's hitting coming in as well, taking mm -hmm. over the side. His first two games in charge of Chelsea was only able to get two draws mm -hmm. and he needed a win for Chelsea and the players finally gave it to him with a 3 0 trashing over Crystal Palace. You know, I'm so used to Chelsea losing. Yeah. When I saw the scoreline, I was automatically assuming it was Crystal <laughs> Palace. Yeah. Oh, they lost again, but yeah. it goes to show you. I saw the game, the Chelsea players performed exceptional, well, mm -hmm. a lot better than they did before. Yeah. And it, go, it makes you wonder, you know, these guys really did turn on Jose Mourinho. I mean, they literally just turned it on right after he left. Yeah. And it's a terrible thing when the players could do something like that. It makes mm -hmm. you wonder what an entire Chelsea squad. Yeah, and uh, first time me as a football fan, mm -hmm. I actually witnessed something like that. Mm -hmm. And it makes you wonder, if, if a team could have that much power against the person that's supposed to have the power mm -hmm. in the team. First time you could see players actually just literally not wanting to play for a coach and would actually, it's basically like they're striking. Mm -hmm. Instead of just not showing up, they would basically show up, but in other words, not show up mm -hmm. while playing the game. It's total lack of professionalism and it yeah. shows that the contrast in the approach and maybe Manchester United learned from Chelsea, yeah. uh, where the players you know, spoke with Van Gaal. Mm -hmm. These guys decided and it makes you wonder what kind of player is willing to lose a game mm -hmm. just to, you know, send a yeah. message to the coach. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure what happened. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, we only seen from the outside. Yeah. We don't yeah. know what really actually happened, why, mm -hmm. why they are mm -hmm. having that strife. But anytime, I, like I always say, the, the name behind the shirt it will never be bigger than the name in front of the shirt. And as a Chelsea player, as a, as a footballer in mm -hmm. general, you're playing for a team regardless of what. There are fans coming out to are paying money, yeah. a lot of money, to mm -hmm. watch you play and support that team. And I know there's no way justifying that. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you totally. That's beyond unacceptable. For years of watching football, mm -hmm. seeing that, if you're angry at the coach or whatever, coaches yeah. come and go. Yeah. And the fact is, they are paid lots of money to do yep. what they do. You have to do your job. Everywhere you work, you'll always have issues with your boss or whatever. Yeah. And their job is to listen to the coach. And then it sends a bad message for Chelsea, mm -hmm. for future managers. Yeah. Uh, Gossett Inc. is a temporary coach. But any coach looking at Chelsea will be like, I don't know if I want to go there. Sure. If they turn on Jose Mourinho, yeah. um, who was known as a good man manager, they, the claims are that he's lost that. <laughs> but uh, it shows you how players now, if they really want to, and I hope it doesn't send a, send a precedent to the rest of the league. Mm -hmm. And they have to give Manchester United credit. Yeah. They observed Chelsea and they learned, all right, we're not going to do that. Sure. And Chelsea, you know, it's, I don't know what to say about Chelsea. <laughs> I don't know. Well, let's go to the EPL table. Arsenal on top with 42 points, followed by Leicester City. Still there on top for those Leicester City fans. Leicester City were in action versus Bournemouth this past week and they drew. We didn't speak about Leicester City and I wanted to just touch on them a little bit. Mm. It looks as though we are seeing this slight decline mm -hmm. of Leicester City. Yeah. They were on a, at least, I think, a three-game winning streak thus far for this at the end of the year, 2015. But then we saw when Boxing Day came around, they dropped points. Then the game after that, well, they lost to Liverpool on Boxing Day. Yeah. Then they drew the, their following game against Manchester City. It was a time where they said this is where Leicester City will be tested. So basically, a loss and a draw wasn't that bad. Mm -hmm. But then they came again against Bournemouth, which they would think they would get the three points, and yeah. they didn't. Yeah, we all, we kind of saw that coming. Yeah, uh, that, that's the thing with. Uh, I don't like to use the word small teams, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, not the usual suspects. Yeah. Uh, eventually, uh, well, we said around January they would start a wobble. Yeah. I believe if uh, the EPL had a longer Christmas break, yeah, I think it would have benefited them the most. They don't have European football, but um, eventually. It's showing now. Mm -hmm. Now, drawing against Manchester City is not bad, but then yeah. the other two losses you spoke about. Yeah. So I think for a team of their stature, they didn't do too bad. Mm -hmm. But this is a crucial month for them. And if they could steady the ship yeah. and try to hold, uh, stay in the top four, it'll be all right. Yeah. So like I said, Leicester City in second place with 40 points, followed by Manchester City with 39. Spurs round out the top four with 36. United in fifth with 33. West Ham not doing too bad in sixth place with 32. In 8th position, we have Liverpool with 30 points and still in 14th place, Chelsea with 23 points. 
So that's it for your EPL wrap-up. Also on January 13th, another big matchup in the English Premier League. We have Liverpool versus Arsenal, as well as Leicester City versus Tottenham Hotspur. So some matches to look out for there.